How many virtual machines can you fit inside of each other without your computer exploding? Well, in today's video, we're gonna be answering that question for you, and you might wanna stick around to the end of the video because the answer may surprise you. What's up, everybody? It's Lil Xan without any face tattoos today, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at virtual machines. Now, if you don't know what a virtual machine is, let me put it into simple terms for you. It's basically a computer inside of a computer. This means that whatever you do on your virtual machine will not actually affect your real computer, so you can go on and run, like, viruses or... I don't know, download Robux generators on your virtual machine. I just, I don't recommend you do that, listen. But it is entirely possible to not mess up your computer by using a virtual machine to test, you know, un unknown programs or software. But anybody that's ever used a virtual machine before has had the thought, you know, what if I put another virtual machine inside of this virtual machine? You know, will it be safer? Is it like doubling up on your condoms? Will it be more secure? There's all these safety and security questions that you may be asking yourself about having multiple virtual machines, and we're gonna look at answering all those questions today. But on the topic of safety and security, the best way to maintain your safety and security online is to actually use a VPN. Which brings me to a word from our sponsor, SafeRoute VPN. If this has ever happened to you, I'm gonna search for you, I'm gonna boot you offline, bro. I will fucking track you down and kill you. Then SafeRoute VPN is the solution for you. With state-of-the-art internet speeds and top-of-the-line DDoS protection, your internet will never go offline again if you use SafeRoute VPN. SafeRoute VPN offers a strict no-log policy to its users, ensuring their data and activity remains fully 100% secured and anonymous, so these guys don't keep logs of your internet activity. By going to the SafeRoute website and using code Veraxity, you can select your server config, drag it into OpenVPN, and you're connected. Unlike other major VPN providers, SafeRoute offers real-time network statistics for you to view in case you're ever curious about the server's network load. This can be done by typing in the IP address of your VPN server into Google and then selecting the graph you want to view. All of this and more makes SafeRoute VPN the optimal choice for gamers, hackers, and internet security enthusiasts. So now that you know how to be safe on the internet and use a VPN so that you don't get your toaster booted offline, let's dive deep into what a virtual machine is and how we could actually use multiple virtual machines layered into each other. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, grab your popcorn, put on your Guy Fox mask, open up Tor browser, grab a VPN, and uh, let's get right into it. So if you've been living under a rock and you have no idea what a virtual machine is, basically a virtual machine allows you to make a separate computer inside of your own computer, right? And now we can actually create one of these things for free. So if we go and we get a software called VirtualBox, this is basically the software that allows you to create virtual machines. So you can put Windows on here, you can put Mac, you can put Linux. And I know a lot of people make Kali Linux virtual machines. I know that's exactly how I use Kali Linux. I don't have that shit on my bare metal, dude. What are you, crazy? But we're getting off topic here. Essentially, the way that you make a virtual machine, right, is you have to select your operating system. Now, this means you have to go find an ISO file for that operating system and download it onto your computer. And now, I would normally use a Windows operating system to make a virtual machine, but this time, it's not gonna cut it, okay? This isn't just your average everyday virtual machine, no. This is advanced virtual machines. So we're actually gonna create our first virtual machine here using Linux Ubuntu. And now in order to set up our first virtual machine here, we're gonna need to locate the operating system ISO file that we downloaded. And if you don't know where to download the Linux one, all you need to do is go to the Ubuntu website, link in the description below for that. But once you downloaded your Ubuntu ISO file, all we have to do is right, we have to create a new virtual machine and we're just gonna be setting it up to use Linux. So we're gonna make all the necessary selections here. And since this is going to be the first a virtual machine in our line of virtual machines. We're gonna need to give it some power, so you're gonna need to have a pretty decently powerful computer to actually do this and put a virtual machine in another virtual machine. Because if you've used virtual machines before, you'll notice something about them, right? They're slow. So just make sure if you wanna nest another VM inside of this virtual machine, right, you have to make sure that this virtual machine right here has got a lot of power behind it. And now if you have a good computer, that's all well and dandy, you can do this just fine. But let me tell you a little horror story about a kid named Jimmy, right? So Jimmy got a computer from his school, and Jimmy wants to install two virtual machines. So Jimmy thinks this is gonna work out fine, and he has his brand new laptop, and he's like, all right, I'm kidded, bro, I have my laptop, let me set up a virtual machine on this laptop. And then five seconds later, whenever Jimmy's midway through setting up his virtual machine, his whole computer explodes, the RAM melts, and then his desk catches on fire. Yeah, so if you try to do something like this with a bad computer, it's not only not gonna work, but if you do it wrong, it might crash your whole computer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the sad story of Jimmy. All right, video's over. Uh, like and subscribe. No, but basically, after we're done giving this computer, I don't know, I'd 
let's say like 8 gigs of RAM and maybe 4 processors, right? I have an 8-core CPU in this laptop and I'm actually giving it half of the CPU power, which should be enough to allocate even more resources later down on the line um, to another VM that's going to be inside of it. Now we're going to name this virtual machine Node 1, right? We're going to name this Node 1 because uh, later on, whenever we put another virtual machine inside of it, that one's going to be Node 2, and then Node 3, and so on, however many virtual machines you can get to actually work within one another. And now the only time I've ever actually gotten this to work is whenever I'm not using Windows as my first virtual machine, right? Windows takes up way too much processing power and RAM to actually be able to host another virtual machine inside of it. It's just insane. I'm sure if you're the owner of a data center, you could probably do this, but on your average everyday gaming setups, it's not going to be a very um, efficient thing to do. So now that we have the easy part out of the way and we have our first virtual machine up and running, right? Anybody can do this, it's just one virtual machine, come on, man. Now we're gonna get into the not so easy stuff. And now this actually took me quite a few attempts, I'm thinking like five or six different attempts on all kinds of different operating systems. But now that you have your Ubuntu virtual machine up, we're actually gonna go look in the Ubuntu app store for another installation of VirtualBox. And now another cool thing about layering virtual machines like this is you could have a VPN on each different virtual machine, right? So you could actually stack VPNs this way too. And even though stacking virtual machines and VPNs is a lot less efficient than, say, specifically crafting your request to go through proxy chains or something like that, it still can be done. And now this part is the science experiment part, right? So on this here Ubuntu virtual machine, what I first tried to do was install Windows 10 on it. And guess what? It broke, yeah. So this thing cannot run a 32-bit version of Windows 10 nested inside of Ubuntu. So then I got to thinking, you know, what's a lighter operating system than Windows 10? So then I actually decided to try and put another Ubuntu installation inside of this one. And you know, it actually did work. It was a little bit slow, it did work. But me personally, I thought that was just a little bit boring, right? Because we're running two of the same OSs. That's, that's stupid, man. Why would I do this? So for the final meat and potatoes of actually nesting another virtual machine inside of this already fake computer, I decided to go with the one, the only, Windows XP. And now this actually worked a lot better than I imagined, right? So I first installed Windows XP on this Ubuntu VM, and it was going pretty slow. Like it usually would, it's already been virtualized once, so it's just gonna get slower and slower from here. I mean, this is basically just a tutorial on how to increase your ping of your local machine, right? And so I started installing Windows XP, and what do you know, it actually installed flawlessly and completely worked right out of the box. So once I got Windows XP up inside of Ubuntu, which was inside of my Windows 10 machine, I decided to mess around with it, right? So the first thing I obviously had to try to do was I had to try to look something up because, you know, Windows XP connected to the internet in this day and age, uh, that's fun. And wouldn't you know, the internet actually did work on this Windows XP machine. Not all the websites worked because I'm pretty sure this browser is completely out of date and it just doesn't even work anymore, but I was actually able to browse the internet a little bit. And now I know what you're all thinking here. Can it prank? So I opened up command prompt on this nostalgic dinosaur and of course it actually started working. You know, the remote shutdown dialogue does work on this thing, so I guess, yes, it can prank. But that's besides the point. Some of the key things that I notice here are the um, speed factor, right? So I did notice that this is way slower than just having a normal virtual machine. And I'm talking like mad slow, dog. It took like 30 minutes just to click on the internet. But after multiple countless attempts, I did finally get a different version of Windows running through a virtualized environment. So if you were asking yourself, is it possible to, you know, put a virtual machine inside of a virtual machine? Yes, it is possible. Very, very inefficient, but completely possible. And uh, yeah, guys, that basically sums up this video today. I hope you guys like this little experiment that I did. Uh, let me know what else you want to see down in the comments below. Personally, I really like making this video. It was pretty fun to shoot, even though it was annoying with all of the different uh, VMs that I tried and failed. But I hope you guys thought this was as interesting as I thought it was. Make sure you head on over to veraxity.org if you want to see some more cool computer stuff. And yeah, guys, if you want a challenge, right, try this experiment for yourself and comment the number of virtual machines deep that you can get. No, but with that being said, this is pretty much the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And uh, yeah, peace out.